NBA totals live for All-Star Sunday. And uh, we're going to talk about the total of the All-Star game of all things. This is our NBA Live segment, of course, that we do uh, during the week. And we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, not only the total uh, for the All-Star game, we're going to talk about also uh, the line and uh, some of the props they have going on uh, for this matchup. Kind of a fun day to go ahead and take a look at some action here uh, in the NBA. Again, this is our our live segment that we do uh, during the week. We are going to be back uh, when uh, when the NBA picks uh, back up later this week. We'll continue this NBA Live segment. We also have our NCAA segment out there as well i'll be talking about that uh, and uh we'll be doing that uh that video will continue continue to do that huh during uh uh, during the course of the year in our nba live segment as well don't forget sbrpicks.com sportsbook review facebook page youtube channel all that good stuff you got to check it out Uh, all the odds and totals and lines so if you guys got some comments you want to chime in Come on in. We're going to talk about the All-Star game, and uh, I'll get back to some comments as uh, we continue this segment. Uh, I got to vent just a little bit, though, before I begin for my college plays yesterday. We're having a really good season in college. We're hitting over 54%. We were hitting 55%, just just about 55% prior to yesterday. We went 0-3 on our picks, and this happens, and this is why it's so funny when uh, when people want to uh, have negative comments when it comes to handicapping for like a bad day, because bad days happen, you know, to everybody. So an 0-3 yesterday. One game was a bad call. The other one, some really tough luck. Double overtime to take away one of my unders. And it had to go double overtime. Overtime would have been just fine. And then uh, and then my other matchup, they score 80. Arizona and Washington, I had an over. They score 82 in the first half or 84 in the first half, and they score 60 points in the second half, with Washington scoring just three points in the final four minutes. Just ridiculous. But that happens. That's why handicapping is so hard. So for you guys out there that are watching this video, um, you know, or checking this out in the live segment, just remember, this is a really, really tough business. I mean, if you're hitting 54 55%, you are successful. And that's what we're doing in NCAA Hoops. We are not successful in NBA totals. That's just, I just have not been very good. So uh, we're going to try and pick that up in the second half of the season. Okay, let's talk about this. So I actually have no play for the total, but I'm going to tell you what I do have a play on. And the reason why is I, now this is a fun day for me as far as handicapping is concerned. This is where I really don't, I mean, my bankroll is still important to me and I don't go crazy. But I don't care as much because it's the all-star game. So the handicapping part really gets kind of taken out of the equation and you're just almost guessing. But I think I have some pretty good educated guesses. As for the total, so yeah, Ninja just uh, chimed in. Yeah, 353. I have it at 353 also at my book. And if you look at a sportsbook review, some places have it at 352 and a half. Now, I have a lean on the under. Just because the line's ridiculous, even though they scored 369 points last year. <laughs> that was amazing. So, uh, yeah, they scored, yeah, 300 and, excuse, 369 points last year. So now this uh, total is 353. But we look at that game last year. I mean, they went 83 points, 90, 99 points. We're going per quarter here. 99 points. 99 points, 88 points. I mean, 196 to 173 final. Uh, They shot, of course, out of their minds. 55, 55% on both sides. The three, 38.7, 33. I mean, a million shots. It's the All-Star game. It's the All-Star game. This is my play for the All-Star game. And this is not going to be a very long video today because there's just not a ton to talk about. But if you guys have questions, I'll extend it because I have a little bit extra time today. Um. My play for the All-Star game, I'm taking the East on the plus money line, and I will tell you why. So, first of all, there's really good – It's first of all, it's the All-Star game. So, I mean, I can understand why the West is a minus 6.5 favorite. That makes a little bit of sense considering they won easily last year. But still, it's the All-Star game. And the guys with the East, knowing they lost by 20 last year, they're going to come out with a little chip on their shoulder. They're probably going to come out with some pride. So, with the West is minus 6.5. Completely makes sense. When you think of the West, it's the better conference. It just is. I mean, they have better teams. And that's fine. But it's the All-Star game. I don't know how many times I have to say that. And what really has me backing the East today is, first of all, you can get 
two to one odds on an all-star game. I mean, why not take a shot with one unit? That's the first thing. The second thing is this. When we go back in the history of the all-star game, all the way back to the, I mean, 50s and 60s even, there's really not a time where one conference or the other really just gets on a streak of several wins. The biggest one we have is the Eastern Conference winning from 1980 to 1984, where they won five times in a row. That's it. We, we go back. We'll see it. You know, a team might, a conference might win a couple years in a row, uh, and then maybe three years in a row. But then it goes like, I mean, look at back, going backwards here. We got, so the West has won two years in a row. Westbrook has been the MVP. West, West, and it went East, and it went West, 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 East, West, East, West, East, East, West, 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 East, and then one of them those was a double overtime. You know, West, East, 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 West. I mean, it just goes back and forth. So you can't really handicap this game. But what you can do is say, you know what? It's the all-star game. Why not take them on the plus money line? I mean, there's no reason not to. The the line set by Ozmakers, I mean, they're just really – I can't imagine there's Ozmakers out there going, oh, we got this lockdown. We're, you know, that minus six and a half. It's not – I will be shocked if it's anywhere close to minus six and a half. Either the West wins by 20 or the East wins by 10 or something like that. So don't think that Ozmakers have this locked in. So I'm going to take a shot here. I'm taking the East on the plus money line. Another interesting fact fact is the last time the East won was uh, back in 2014 in New Orleans. Same place. Kyrie Irving was the MVP. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the East on the plus money line. If Ninja, if you do take the West, take don't take them on a – My suggestion is do not take them uh, laying a a big number like the minus 230. Go ahead. Then you want to go ahead and lay the points because that will save you some juice, save you some vigor. So you always want – that's money management. But it's it's the all-star game. Eh, Do what you want. Uh, Let's see what another comment we have. I think there's simply no reason to bet on the all-star game. It's like flipping coin. Right. Exactly. That's why I say take the plus money line. Take the plus money line. I think every all-star game – Always, for me at least, well, for basketball and for baseball, um, I always take whatever whatever there is plus. Always. Just, I mean, because it's, and it's a fun day, you know, it's a fun day to watch some hoops or watch baseball or whatever, whatever sport you're watching, and you're getting plus money odds. So, yeah, I mean, it can you, you can't handicap the game, but you can bet it. Absolutely. And I think you can bet it in a smart way where you take two to one odds. Uh, let's see. Who are your college picks for later tonight? I don't think LeBron is not going to play much. Yeah, probably not. And we're going to talk about the MVP odds as well. Um, I have uh, on my NCAA picks, I have one that's already gone off right now. And then my other one, I, I got uh, Michigan and Minnesota under the total. It's now dropped. It went from 130. I got them at under 138. It's not 136 and a half. I kind of still like the under. Two good defensive teams. I don't think the pace is going to be very fast. But again, and I was 0-3 yesterday. But so again, like I already talked about, some really tough luck, which happens to all of us. But also, we tend to remember those games, you know, as a handicapper uh, who does this every single day. We tend to remember those games, those days where we have like really rough days or really bad losses instead of remembering the ones where we got really lucky. And that happens as well. So we have to kind of keep it in perspective. But yeah, just as a note, because I thought this was kind of funny, my my money management is fantastic. So I don't really I don't sweat the wins and losses because I know in the long term I'm going to profit. Um, you know I'm talking months to years here. In the long term I'm going to profit. This is this is more of a you know a long term investment strategy for me, and it's quite significant for me. I, I take it very seriously. Um, but I also had. Just to let you guys know, Santa Clara and San Diego, uh, I was watching that game for a while, and the halftime line was 66 and a half, and, and I knew right off the bat, the odds makers had really overshot it, so I went and took under the 66 and a half, and what did they do? Double overtime for me to lose again on the last game of the day, and I just kind of chuckled about that, because it just happens. They, and like the Texas Tech-West Virginia game, they had to go to double overtime. Even overtime, I still had had it. But that just that's just the way it goes sometimes. Sports can really – that's why this business can be really hard. If you're not – you know, a lot of guys out there, it, when they blast me or they say I'm horrible or whatever, they're not looking at the big picture. 
and, and actually, I don't really read a lot of the comments, to tell you the truth. It's from time to time I do. But most likely, they're probably wagering too much. So you guys don't do that. Make sure you control your units because there's going to be bad days. It's just That's just the way it is. There's going to be bad weeks. There could be bad months. You're not going to win every month out of the year. You're not. If You're not going to win 12 months out of the year. It's, it's, that's mathematically impossible. I don't know anybody that does that. I, and, and I'm in this business. Um, but you can win realistically – eight to nine, even maybe even 10 months out of the year. You could realistically, if you're really solid with your money management and you don't go on tilt, you can, absolutely. I mean, that's a really good year. Okay, sorry, I'm kind of getting on my soapbox again. Uh, let's see, what else we're we gonna talk about? So I talked about college. I'm taking the East on the plus money line, no play on the total. I just can't pull the trigger on a 353. If anything, I'd lean on the under, but that's, again, I've already talked about that. That's My mentality is to look towards the under. That's just the way I'm built. Um, yeah, Ninja's right. Betting is always up and down. It is. We just, we want it to go, you know, it's going to go down and up and down and up, but we want to see that slow kind of, I've done this before already, kind of, you know, where you look at the stock market, it's the same kind of idea where there's going to be fluctuations in the market, but you want to keep it on a, going on an upward scale. And some months are going to go down, some months are going to go up, but you want to just keep it kind of going up gradually. That's why money management is so important. It's so important as we do this. And I think Sportsbook Review is way important to check out the value in lines and different sports books. You know, and you get sign up bonuses and stuff too. And that's why I, I love working for Sportsbook Review and promoting the website because I think you can really, I, I believe, I mean, I've done it. You can make money off of sports betting. You, you can if you do it the right way and you keep it in perspective. But guys that go on tilt and, you know, I put three plays out there and they wager their whole bankroll on those three plays. That's don't do that. That's I don't, I don't do that because I know my winning percentage is about 55 percent. That's what I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit 54 to 55 percent. Um, now, NBA hasn't been that way, but this year has been kind of an anomaly where the totals have been out of control. So I'm going to try and adjust. I'm going to really do a ton of research over this next week before we jump back in and try and adjust. But totals are really hard. And like I've always mentioned as well, again, on my soapbox, sorry, is I don't bet just totals. I don't. I mean, I have a lot of spread picks that I do personally. Um, and maybe next year we'll be able to, uh, you know, incorporate that. You hear me with my spread picks from time to time, but not all of them. Because sometimes I'll pull the trigger, if, you know, five minutes before a game if there's some something I like. Okay. So let's see. Just an idea. Excuse me. Ugh. I think Curry will be the MVP. If you saw last night when he missed those half-court shots, he kind of made himself look bad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, you think, yeah, that's that's not a bad way to look at it. So, let's look at – okay, let's go ahead. Let's talk about the MVP. And let's look at the value on that. So, All-Star Weekend. So, right now you got Curry. He's at a plus – I have plus uh, – over plus 800. Yeah, Desi, you might be right on the over. Over, yeah, because that line's actually gone up. It started out, I think, at three forty-nine, maybe. I can't, I can't remember. I didn't pay much attention. It's All Star game, but you got Curry at plus eight hundred. So yeah, that's not. A, I mean, anytime you're getting that much plus money on one of the best shooters in the game, sure, why not? I'll tell you who I like. I tell you who I like. Okay, and I'll get back to your comments in a sec. Let me tell you who I like for the for the All Star game. There was uh, there's two guys I like, Giannis. Antetokounmpo, say that five times fast. I don't even know if I said it right. But I'll take Giannis because he is a beast and there's not going to be any defense. He's going to throw down some dunks and he might just go absolutely crazy. And I think the East is going to win. He plays for the East. I like it. Plus, he's getting plus over plus 2,400. Why not take a unit? I mean, and also he's kind of an up and kind of, he's got a lot of press recently, kind of a dark horse. But I, I, I might take a shot with him at one you know, 24 to one odds. He might not get it. I mean, there's a lot of other guys. Um, I, I don't like going for the the regular guys. I don't like Westbrook, even though he might get it. He's at plus 370 right now over that, but he's won it the last two times. Irving's not a bad call, um, but you got to get a guy that's going to put up some points. So I like Giannis and I got to like Anthony Davis because it's in his hometown. And he's at plus, yeah, he's, he's like one of the higher ones at over... Plus 500. So in order, it goes Westbrook, uh, Davis, as far as your value, Harden. And then you start getting up more to the 800 with Durant, Curry, 
you know, that uh, Isaiah Thomas is also not a bad call either at plus 1300. So I might throw out three units on three guys, maybe Giannis, Isaiah, and Anthony Davis. You know, I might do that. And if I lose three units, that's okay. Um, I might do that. I'm going to still get, I'm going to think about that a little bit longer, but those, those are interesting. Okay. And let's go ahead. And I want to talk about one last thing and that's odds to win the NBA championship. No, I don't want to talk about that just yet. We'll talk about that later. Well, uh, honestly, right now, uh, I kind of like the Spurs. I think the Spurs are getting great value to win the championship. Uh, right now, they're at plus 675. I think that's great value on a very, very good team that can beat Golden State. Golden State, of course, is the favorite. But I think San Antonio is not a bad call at all. At plus 600, sure, why not? Uh, let's see. But what I did want to talk about was the all-star MVP and regular season MVP. Okay, so where's that regular season MVP? I think it's up the list. Oh, I think I lost it. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Um, okay, I'll just talk. I, I don't need to look at the odds. So for the regular season MVP, right now you got James Harden putting up video game type numbers. Um, and he's a favorite. He's actually, I believe, now I got to check because I believe he's minus money. And I, I got to check that. I want to make sure I'm right as far as the MVP is concerned. Where is it at? Uh, come on. Where is that? Give me one sec here, guys. I'm looking at my sports book for this prop. And I can't remember which category it was under. Maybe it's NBA special props. I think that's it. There it is. Yeah. Regular season MVP. You got Harden at minus 140. Now, he's putting up ridiculous numbers as far as his scoring and his assists. Because that's Mike D'Antoni. He, that's what's going to happen. But here's who I like. And I'm biased because I like the Spurs. I like Kawhi Leonard at 1,500. Because he's putting up 25 points a game and he's the best defender in the league. Arguably. So at the end of the day, if the Spurs make a really strong push, I think it'd be hard. And you're getting plus 1,500. That's why I like Kawhi Leonard. Um, James Harden, he's going to continue. But he plays no defense at all. So if the voters take that into consideration, which they usually don't, but if they happen to do that this season, considering the offense has been bananas, um, I think Leonard's a good shot. I think that's good value at 1,500. Uh, Westbrook, of course, he's at plus 160, putting up his triple doubles. There's a prop on that as well. I don't know about that one. There's also a prop on Popovich if he's going to mention Trump again. <laughs> that was kind of funny. That's it. Okay, so for me, I'll just say this. For the All-Star MVP, I kind of like Giannis. I kind of like Isaiah because uh, it's plus money value, and I like Anthony Davis because he's at home. Those are the three I kind of like. You know, nothing set in stone just yet, but set in stone for me is taking the East on the plus money line, okay, because I think there's some good value on that for a unit. All right, let's talk about some uh, comments here. I'm going to get a drink of my coffee. We'll talk for a few more minutes, and we'll we'll go ahead and uh, get the day going. Uh, all right, I talked about, yeah, Curry, because, yeah. Uh, Joseph is losing today in college. Yep, bad days happen. Sorry, man. I had a bad day. I was 0-3 in my totals yesterday. I already talked about that earlier in the segment. I got snake bit on a couple games, and that happens. Uh, totals are hard. Oh, shoot. What is this? Okay. Thank you, Ninja. Whoops. Uh, live segment again will be as soon as uh, NBA picks back up. So first day back is uh, will be Thursday. You got Thursday. You got a whole slate of games. So that'll be uh, Thursday at 4 o'clock Eastern. And the time might change once daylight savings comes into effect. I'll talk about that, though, when we get closer to that. Um Penn and Drexel. Well, Penn already beat Yale, so I don't know. Did you what did Joseph? Did you have Yale and you lost? I I kind of like uh, I liked Penn in that game, but uh, Drexel Drexel lost yesterday, right? That was yesterday. Penn was today, so I don't know exactly what you're talking about. If you're just throwing stuff out there to see if I'm on it, uh, but I thought Drexel. Oh, maybe that is today. I don't see it. Are you talking about Friday? Uh, I'm really sorry. Uh, uh, Drexel uh, lost at Delaware. Sorry, that was Thursday, but I don't see... 
I don't know what you're talking about, Joseph. I'm sorry. Uh, Penn, though, I that, I like them. I did like them against Yale. I'll just I'll just tell you, I played Penn. Sorry, I got him. I got him plus the points because I didn't like how Yale played against Princeton the other night. So yeah, I, I won that one. Uh, Connecticut and Temple. You took the over. So did I. So did I. Let's go and let's take a look at that. That's actually going on right now. That'll be fun. Let's see. I made a mistake in my video yesterday. Uh, 28 points. They're at the 11-minute marker. That's not bad. They still have a really good shot to get there. Um, I made a mistake yesterday saying, uh, looking at the Big East for Connecticut, because I'm an old school guy, but of course they're the the American. You know, just it happens. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, Joseph. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. That's it. All right, so let's go ahead and let's sign off. So uh, again, I like uh, the East on the plus money line. That's it. So we'll be back with the live segment. Now, I'm going to talk to uh, some people at Sportsbook Review. Maybe we'll do a live segment for the NCAA. You guys might be interested in that. So maybe we'll do that uh, in a day or two. But so be on the lookout for that. I think I might be able to do that, but I'm not sure if we're going to do that. So that's uh, 50-50. We'll see. I kind of would like to do that because I really like NCAA hoops. Uh, No, Joseph, you're good. You're good. Okay, Joseph just made a comment. That's all. All right, that's it, guys. Hey, best of luck today on uh, your picks. Remember, it's an all-star game. Don't go crazy. Have some fun. And uh, we'll be back. And I wish you luck on your picks today.